Today, we're going to be talking about back-saving devices in the woodyard. About a year or so ago, I did a video with Chris from In the Woodyard on log tongs. Since then, I've accumulated a few more. Wanted to show the different types that are out on the market right now and the features and benefits on them. The ones I like and the ones that I don't. Though I don't have all the brands, I do have a good representation of the major ones out there. There are several brands on the market. I currently have about two or three different ones, one being Fiskar, Baco, B-A-H-C-O, and Timber Tough, and a couple of the rubber handle type ones. They all come in different brand names and everything. I, I am missing one major one, and that is the Log Ox log ox and i know a number of you have those and like them at one point i'll probably get one and do a separate review on that i purchased my first set of log tongs which were the bacos about 10 years ago and i was fortunate to buy the best at that time not knowing that it was the best but one of the best ones on the market one brand I did miss was Husqvarna. They do have one as well. And there are others too that I may be missing. We'll also be showing a couple of variations on the pulp hook. All right, enough talking. Let's get to the wood yard and show you how these things work and why they are so beneficial. I'm gonna start out with the Baco log tongs, which is my favorite. I just love out of the box how sharp their points are and they dig right into the wood. There are several reasons for using a log tong. One, in wet weather, your gloves stay dry. Two, in snowy weather, you're not getting your, wet, your gloves wet as well and you're not getting cold. There's also different materials on the handle, plastic, cork, and metal and each of them have their benefits. But this one is the one that I like, and I'll show you why, too. Uh, you don't have to go all the way down to pick up a log. You can either pick it up in the center, or you can pick it up on the end. Let me show you a couple benefits here of using these where you're not bending down as much and you're, you can flick your wrist and toss it, which is really time saving. Since I have to get it up to my pile, if I did it by hand, I'd have to reach down, pick it up and toss it. With the log tong, all I do is I grab it by the end and flick it up. Same thing. Even small logs, you can pick up like that and toss over. Real simple. Here's the Timber Tough. I really like the handle. It feels good in cold weather. It doesn't uh, get cold. The tips are marginal. They're okay, but I, have to, I had to use my Dremel and sharpen them up. And when I say they're marginal is it's really a shaky tool, but it does work. Don't get me wrong, it does work. And there is a price point for this. And once again, I can pick this up, but as you can see, it's not as sharp as the other ones and it just falls over. Well, like the old saying, if one is good, two is better. And let me explain why. When you're picking up a log, any of these logs on the bottom, you typically have to only pick up one or put one underneath your arm and then try to grab one and it's tough. With the log tongs, you could reach into a pile, pick it up and then carry it over to wherever you're going to pile and just toss it in. Really nice. Here's a log that's 13 inches. I can't pick that up as you can see. 
it's just too wide. But you don't need to. You go on the ends and grab it. And you can pick it up easily and put it on. When you go to buy your first set, make sure of what you're buying. The reason I'm saying that is the Fiskars here only comes in a nine inch. Whereas the Baco and some of the others are an 11 inch. I'm surprised Fiskars has not released their larger version, which I believe is only available in Europe. But don't quote me on that. If you take a look at the Timber Tough, as opposed to the Baco, they are a little bit larger. There are other brands on the market that state that they can pick up larger rounds. But be careful of what you're asking for. Because bigger isn't always better because that round's going to be much heavier. So the 11 inch will pick up a larger log than you expect and I'll show you why. The Fiskar which is noted at 9 inches will pick up a 12 inch diameter log. I'll show you that momentarily. Here in the States, companies like Northern Tool and Equipment also offer their own brand of log tongs as well as a company, a U.S. company, that manufactures them called Pinchalog. Yeah, it might sound a little funny, but it looks like a pretty nice tool uh, that is handmade here in the U.S. I've been showing you the Baco 11-inch standard log tongs. When I found out that they came out with a long handle version, I immediately ordered this because I know what kind of a back saving device this is. Let me show you. On a log like this, if I have to bring it over to the car or trailer or wherever, I can drag it by just grabbing it here and pulling it with me. The other thing that I can do is bring it up in the center And that makes life a whole lot easier. As you noticed, I was not bending virtually at all. These are great. I usually use one small, one large when I have projects. Another demonstration of a larger block. Typically I'd use my hookaroon or pickaroon to move this around. But if I didn't have it, I can use this easily, hook it in, and just drag it where I need to. These flexible log tongs work as well. I personally don't use them often. I prefer the metal log tongs. These do work. They come in a couple different sizes. This one's for the 16 inch logs. So that does work there. But I can't flick it as easily as I can or I haven't mastered it yet. There we go. but not as easy to do the center of the log as you can see here. So that's where the metal log tongs are more beneficial. I know a number of you would chew me out if I didn't show the pulp hook, especially Buck and Billy. This is his favorite tool. I haven't quite mastered this yet. When I first started, I went to Google and just put in pulp hook and this came up. And I figured, okay, however, this is a hay hook for all you farmers that are out there and know this very well. And I will tell you, it, on softwoods, it does work pretty decently, but you get into any hardwood and it just bounces right off. But for the most part, I bought two of these right away and thought I was in heaven until I started using them and they didn't work for me very well. Let me show you. Well, I guess we're not going to do that. 
So then I went ahead and I graduated to a traditional pulp hook. This one has a tip on it, a very special tip, ground and square. It definitely grabs real easily. I have not mastered how to flick it yet. So I don't know how Billy does it, but he does it. It doesn't work very good when you're doing the center, but on the ends, it definitely works out good. One of these days I'll play around more with this and maybe master it. But for right now, log tongs is the way to go. While going to rummage sales, garage sales, tag sales, whatever you want to call them, um, I came up and bought some of these. I thought, give it a try. I thought these would work, but after trying them, I didn't have much success. When you try to grab it, it will work a little bit. But I'm chasing, and it's a, a fair amount of work. And on the small pieces, they're okay, but nothing that great. Once again, I'm back to the log tongs. Now let me show you the benefits of the Fiskar LT6 log tongs. As I mentioned, they're good to nine inches. A lot of times before I had my grapple and I did have some pallet forks, I would move stuff by hand. And this would be tough to move. But with two of these, I can just grab it and it's easy to turn around and just set it on the pallets or pallet forks that is. Both the LT6 and the LT4 do come with plastic holsters that you can attach to your belt. If you watch a lot of the Scandinavian loggers, they carry both of these or at least one of them. More so the LT4 they will be carrying on their belt. And the purpose is, let's assume this was a larger log and they just cut it and they're bucking it and they want to move it. It's in the snow and everything else. With this, you hook it and pull it over. So these are really nice. I don't use it often. Most of the time in the winter, I will carry one of these. But uh, for the most part, I use my pickaroon or hookaroon. If you can't tell, it's a scorcher here in Wisconsin, even though it's September. But I hope you found this video both informative and entertaining. Just want to make sure that you're aware of all the options or most of the options that are out there to help save your back. I'll have other ones in the future here as well. Thanks again for watching. And remember, pass it forward, make the world a better place, and don't be a tool. Watch Tony's Cool Tools. Thanks. Have a great one. Bye.